take control of your network with Glasswire. For more information, check the link below. What's up guys, CB Moddy here, back with another video, and it is the age-old internet argument. Dot vs line thermal paste install. And today, we're going to be going ahead and testing it to see just how much of a difference there actually is between doing a dot or a line down your CPU with thermal paste. Now, I do also do want to point out that whilst dot vs line is really the age-old argument and is today's focus, there are a couple other methods like the X method that has come about thanks to the fact that new Ryzen chips are absolutely massive and well just one single line really can't really cover it and also to the fact that the new or sorry the Threadripper chips not really Ryzen but the Threadripper chips also to have uh, four modules on them so it kind of makes sense to do the X on top of this there's also to the spread and make an absolute mess method which I really don't like and not exactly many people do but because the age-old argument is dot versus line that is what we're going to be talking about however if you want to see an even bigger showdown than what we're going to be doing here today let me know down in that that comment sections. But today, as I did mention, it is dot vs line. So let's go ahead and jump into our setup and see what we'll be testing for today's video. Now the CPU that is in question today is my i7-5820K. Now this video came about because I was cleaning the CPU, and rather cleaning the computer, and took off the CPU cooler, and went to put it back on, and I thought to myself, is there really a difference between dot and line? For me, I've been doing the line method on bigger CPUs, such as the 2011 chips, so the 5820K is one of them, whereas I usually use dot on some of these smaller sized CPUs. So for me, I never really thought about it until today, when I was cleaning my CPU, and I thought, hang on a second is there really a difference so this is why we're going ahead and testing it now for the CPU cooler to go along with this CPU we're using the Noctua NHD 15 this is the 2011 edition because I will obviously I have a 2011 CPU so it makes sense that I have the 2011 edition CPU cooler and also too we're using this guy the Noctua NDH1 uh, thermal compound now if you want to find out more you can find that video right up there where we actually went in depth and did a massive showdown to see which CPU compound or rather which thermal compound for your CPU is going to be the best and for that video NTH1 did come out on top so that's what we're using today. Now we're also to using Prime95 to go ahead and warm things up and there will be no overclocking for today's video for any of the CPUs that we do test. Now I did mention any of them do hold on for a little bit but first uh, as we did say there is no overclocking which makes these tests 100% repeatable and you can go ahead and do them at home if you also to own a 5820K. So with the room temperature set to 24.8 degrees Celsius I fired up my PC for the first time with the dot install and then obviously did it again with the line install. Now each of these tests I did five times and I'll touch on this in just a moment but as my CPU is the socket 2011 CPU it's actually rather large in comparison to 1150X or even an AMD socket CPU so this may actually be a little bit of a difference when it comes to actually using dot versus line. Now as I did say I'm going to be doing five test installs. I'll be cleaning them off with isopropyl alcohol in between and I'll be making making sure the surfaces are clean and ready to go for the next test. The reason why I'm doing it five times is just to make sure I don't get a bad mount and also too so we can generate some averages for later use in the video. But I did them five times so we kind of got an idea of what is going on. If it was considerably hotter every single time we ran it, then obviously it's going to be running hotter rather than just a single run variation. I made my estimate, which is probably not really going to be much of a difference, but let's take a look at the numbers. and. Well, turns out I was right. For each run that I did, whether it was dot or whether it was line, the numbers were just about identical. Even with my larger 2011 chip, the differences really weren't there at all. And in fact, the only differences that you can actually see in these numbers is the run to run differences rather than the actual differences in dot versus line. In fact, some versions of the dot won out and some versions of line won. So there really isn't too much of a difference here. The only real difference was when we actually removed the CPU cool and took a look what was going on underneath we can see that the dot method spreads out to be a nice circle whereas the line method spreads out to be a bit more of an oval. Now because we are running modern processors that have their actual cores in a straight line down the middle of the CPU this is really not much of a problem because whether it's a circle or an oval it's still going to be covering the CPU just fine meaning heat transfer is also going to be just about fine. 
but provided that you actually apply enough thermal paste in the first place, whether it be dot or line, you're really not going to be seeing too much of a difference. But let's face it, one CPU with one thermal compound with one cooler and only a couple tests doesn't really sound like something we would do here on the channel. I mean, I've been known to test 10 CPUs or 10 video cards, not because there was really a difference, but to see whether there might be a difference. So I took that mentality and we absolutely ran with it. I grabbed a whole bunch of different CPUs from our 7700K up to some of the brand new Ryzen Zen 2 stuff that have just recently dropped and I went ahead and grabbed all 10 of these CPUs and I'll list them right here because honestly it'd take me too long to read them all out but all these guys is what we bought in on our tray of CPUs again from things like our 7700K to more odd things like our FX8350 and again even some of the new Ryzen APU stuff I did grab a wide variety of CPUs. Do note, I didn't grab a Threadripper chip, so that is just something we do need to note. I did the same 5 dot and also two same 5 line installs and we use the Arctic CPU cooler that I reviewed up in this video right here, which isn't a too bad unit either way. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here. And, well... Yeah, we didn't really get that much of a difference. Even though we supersized these tests and it took me literally a whole week to do all these CPU runs, but once we do take a look at these final numbers, we basically observe just about no differences from run to run, test to test, and heck, even the CPU averages are pretty close to that. Again, the room was set to the same temperature, there was no overclock supplied, everything was as it was, out of the box, and slapped into a system. The only time I noticed a difference was when I forgot to actually secure the CPU cooler down properly, and it was kind of loose, and the 7700K decided to shut down because it got a little bit too hot, but that was user error as opposed to thermal paste error, so that was basically basically that. All in all though, there wasn't really that much a difference. So I guess all in all, is there a difference between dot and line? Well, as we took a look at the numbers here today, there isn't actually a difference at all. Whether you look at some of the line samples or some of the dot samples, they're gonna be winning out and also to losing, so there really isn't much of a difference. What is important, however, is you actually install the correct amount of thermal compound for your CPU. For example, the line method is really easy to go ahead and put too much thermal compound on your CPU, whereas the dot method that is actually really easy to put not enough on your CPU because when you put a dot in the middle, it already looks like too much. And then when you start putting a whole lot more on, it looks kind of dodgy, but you actually do need that much. So dot versus line, it really comes down to what you want to do. The numbers back it up, they're basically the same either way you go, whether you're looking at AMD CPUs, 2011 chips, 1150X, AM4, AM3, all those guys, they're all going to be just about the same, whether you use a dot or whether you use a line. And again, this is down to the fact that, well, CPU coolers put a lot of clamping pressure onto the top of CPUs, so whether you've got a dot or a line, it's just going to be smooshed out either way. So whether you're part of the dot master race or the line legends, you can be sure that you're really not losing out too much performance, but let me know down in the comment sections. Are you a dot person or are you a line person? Or do you prefer just to make a huge mess and spread it out uh, on the top of your CPU cooler? Let me know down below. You can find links to the Noctua NHT or rather NH1 that we, N N NT H1, I can't even pronounce the stuff. Uh, but you can find links to this guy, which is what we used in the video. You can find links to the CPUs, the CPU cooler, all that kind of stuff down in the description box. Thanks all for watching. And I'll catch you all in the next one.